Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and this is another episode in a Proxmos home server series. I believe this video is going to be quite lengthy because I'm going to show you quite a few things. Main goal of this video is to set up PyHole inside my Proxmox home server and set up a second PyHole somewhere in the cloud. For this video I will show you how I will set up this inside the Hetzner. My main Proxmox server uh, PyHole is running inside Ionos. And in UK, Ionos, um, I think how that's how you pronounce them, Ionos, um, they offer one virtual private uh, server, Linux, for one pound a month. Once the catch with this is that you need to sign 12 month contract to get one pound a month. So you pay 12 pounds here in UK and you get straight away a virtual private server for technically a pound a month. Instead of me setting this up and then basically paying 12 pounds um, for a year to do how to get this configured, I'm going to use the Hetzner. They are a bit more expensive compared to Ionos. Uh, I'll be able to have virtual private server inside Hetzner for about less than a four pounds, but it's much easier to show me inside the Hetzner because it is going to be super easy to create one. And then after this video is done, I can basically delete and remove this virtual server with no, no more bills coming in, if you know what I mean. So one pie hole will run inside the Proxmox. Second pie hole will run inside the Hetzner. Both pie hole instances will be able to talk to each other using Tailscale network. And to make sure that my my pie hole, main pie hole inside my Proxmox, whatever changes I will do to this pie hole, they will be synced, those changes, configurations, everything else will be synced to my Hetzner server and update that pie hole using the uh, gravity sync um, feature, which will make sure that two pie holes are basically in sync. So if my main pie hole dies or Proxmox decides to stop functioning and I'm out and about, let's say my phone, uh, on my phone, I'll still be able to utilize pie hole ad block and local DNS uh, resolve uh, feature because my phone will be connected to this uh, tail scale network, which will then obviously will jump from the main pie hole to be used as this one. So enough yapping, let's start setting up. By the way, everything will be uh, split in chapters. So if you know, for example, how to set a pie hole already, uh, just jump to a chapter that is relevant for you that you just carry on setting this up. So point number one, we need to set up the pie hole inside the my main Proxmox instance. So I'm going to click create CT. I will create a container instead of using a virtual machine. And I'll name this pie hole dash main. I will use privileged container because I want to install Tailscale inside this LXC container run alongside PyHole. And Tailscale, yes, you can have Tailscale running inside unprivileged container, but this requires way more configuration, where privileged container is just two extra lines you need to add into configuration file for everything to work. So I'm going to use privileged container. Under templates, I will select Ubuntu. Disks, 8 gigabytes is plenty. CPU is one fine, memory 512 megabytes is plenty for PyHole and Tailscale to run. Network, I want to get the DHCP IP address. DNS, I'll leave everything like it is. And confirm, just check if everything is here is fine. Yes, I can, no, I don't need to start. No, because we need to amend the config file. So while this is doing, let me quickly get the config file. I was supposed to be prepared for this, but I'm just gonna get this line, two lines copied. All the links that I'm going to use in this video will be in the description below, below the like button, so you can follow follow these steps. So LXC container is created. Let's jump to my Proxmox uh, instant on the shell. I need to type nano etc slash etc slash pv slash LXC and then ID number of the, the, uh, the LXC container. In my case, it's 104. Press tab to dot .conf at the end. Yours might be different, yours might be 112 or 112, just whatever, you make sure that you're editing the actual container for the pie hole. So I'll go all the way down at the end, just below the swap 512, I'm gonna paste those two in. And these two, these two lines will allow privileged container to fully utilize or fully give permission tail scale to do a networking, otherwise tail scale won't be able to start properly um, inside the privileged container. And like I said, inside the privileged container, there is a there is a way to run Tailscale, but it's just way more steps. So I'm gonna control press Control X to close, Y to save, Enter to confirm, and Tailscale configuration has been saved. So now I can go and run this LXC container.
So start and container started. So default username is root and the password is the one I chose during the create CT process. I'm logged in. So first thing straight away I need to do is apt update and apt upgrade the system to make sure it's all up to date. So while this is running, I can go and prepare to get the download link for Tailscale. So click while you're logged into your Tailscale dashboard, click on a download, which will take you to the download page. It detects that Linux, I'm using Linux because I'm using the, the Dell XPS laptop running Linux Mint, but yours might be different depending what system you're using. So you just select the Linux and make sure you copy this. And here we are, Alexi container, uh, container updated and upgraded. So now I can go right click and paste the, the command to install um, Tailscale. Yes, it's gonna com uh, complain about curl. I expected that, let's, let's delete all that. Not sure why I'm typing all this. Apt, apt, install curl. So let's get, get curl installed, it's just 300, uh, 3000 kilobytes. So that's it, that's installed. I can bring the, the command to install Tailskill and press enter. So while Tailskill installed, let's go and prepare ourselves for Pyho installation. Again, all the links will be in the description below. I just need to copy this command, go back here. And this says it is done. So right now I'm gonna say tail scale up, enter. And this is the command I need to copy. Oh, actually I'm gonna copy this and then I'll have to recopy the uh, Pyho installation script. So I copy the uh, URL from the tail scale up command, which will open the login page. I'm gonna click on sign in with Google. You just click whatever um, the login process you used to create a tail scale account. I'm gonna choose my Google account. When I say yes, I'm happy to connect. Close that. And now if I'm gonna go into machines inside my Tailskill dashboard, let's refresh that. I should be able to see Pyho main showing up here. So straight away, I'm just gonna click on the three dots and disable the key expiry. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the Dell XPS because I forgot to do that earlier. So right now all my machines have a key expiry, expiry disabled. That means that uh, I don't need to re-authenticate them again after I think it's 90 days. So Pyho is installed and this is the IP address inside the Tailnet. Now I can go and copy the URL for Pyhole, go back in the Proxmox inside the Pyhole main container, right click, paste and press enter. And now I'm going to start setting up the Pyhole installation. There is a slight difference between how the Pyhole will be installed in this uh, inside my Proxmox and inside the virtual machine, which I will show you in a, uh, when the time comes when we're going to start setting up Pyhole inside the headsnap. So this install installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. When I say yes, yes, continue. And now this is the difference between the um, setting up inside the Proxmox and setting up inside the Hetzner or any other virtual private server. Because this is gonna be used inside my local network, I need to choose ETHO0 or ETH0. Inside Hetzner, I will use Tailscale because I want to Pyhole to co be communicated by via Tailscale network instead of using their internal network or public IP address. So in this case, as because I'm setting up this inside my Proxmox, I'm gonna leave this as ETH0 and press select. My upstream DNS, I choose Cloudflare. You can choose whichever you want, enter. And then yes on that, yes, yes, yes show all the logs yes and installation is carrying on so once installation is done it, i will get a, a window showing up with my admin password you can obviously copy this password and use to log in as to an admin panel i'm just gonna straight away change the pyhole password to something more easier for me to remember so this installation should be done here we go this is a password to use to access the um the admin panel i'm just gonna go straight away and type pyhole space dash a space dash p and enter new password and i saw the ip address was 192.168.178.194 slash admin and press that enter the new password i created and yes save on that and this is my pie hole which running inside the inside my um, proxmox so now we need to do the same thing inside vps server so Hesna allows you to do a lot of things or uh, rent cloud. Basically, this is a cloud virtual private server. Robot is basically you renting the actual bare metal server. Console here, it's just a console DNS records. I'm going to click on a cloud, log in with my credentials, and I am inside the Hesna dashboard. So now, as you can see, there is no projects active. I'm going to click new project and name this Proxmox Home Server Series. 
add the project and now the project is created I can click inside the project and start setting up the uh, servers I'm gonna click add the server so right now first step I need to choose the closest location as I am live in United Kingdom um, any top to any top any first free is a good option for me you can choose if you're for example from America you can choose one of these I'm gonna leave this as a Helsinki which is selected by default next which image I choose obviously I will choose Ubuntu but let's say in the future if you wanted to set up something else inside Hesna there's options for apps like you can straight away use docker you can go and set up a next cloud some of it is a WordPress uh, here we go WireGuard if you want I'm gonna choose OS image and it's gonna be Ubuntu 2204 I'm gonna choose shared uh, CPU virtual CPUs and I'll choose x86 and I'll choose the top one which is brings to 4.55 euros a month which is around just shy of four pounds a month scroll down I don't need this uh, this one private um, primary IP address of a type to do so you can basically add additional ones as you can see this is IP is chargeable which is been added to uh, this but if you want you can obviously make sure that you can add yourself ipv6 i'm just going to use ipv4 if you have option or you already have your ssh keys generated you can add that in for this video i'm not going to use i'm just uh, ssh keys i'm just going to use the simple password volumes i don't need any volumes additional storage firewalls no backups no uh, placement uh, placements group no no just scroll down all the way to the bottom and server name Bible dash cloud and this is by the way not only the server name but this is going to be a host name as well so Pi-hole cloud and this one is called Pi-hole main so I'm going to click create and buy now and Hesna will create this server in less than five minutes so I'm going to click on the Pi-hole cloud and now this is the dashboard of the Pi-hole cloud uh, Pi-hole cloud virtual server I have one CPU two gigabytes of RAM 20 gigabytes of disk allocated so if I used one euro cent traffic 20 terabytes a month and this is a full price so right now I need to log into the system I'm gonna copy the IP address connect to this is gonna be ssh root at an IP address of the server so it's right now asking for a fingerprint and that's it it's asking me right now for the password but I don't have a password for Hesna. by the way all this setup is going to be different depending on what kind of virtual private server provider you choose with Hetzner once you create a VPS and you need to obviously you can connect by using SSH keys if you have that set up but you need to get yourself right now a root password to do that I need to click on the rescue and then I click on the reset pa root password yes I accept that and it's going to give me the new password and this is the password I need to use to log in so password is make sure it's copied go back inside the SSH client and try to connect again right click and paste the password enter and I am logged in inside this virtual private uh, server so Pi-hole cloud is going to be my uh, cloud and Pi-hole main on the Proxmox obviously is Pi-hole main so straight away first thing to do is the same as I've done with the Alexi container is to update and upgrade everything and here we are update and upgrade completed so I can clean the screen and go into a browser and copy the download command to install Tailscale so copy the same command that I used inside the Alexi container go into a CCH client which is connected to my Hetzner right click paste and install Tailscale Tailscale is installed inside Hetzner and right now we can type Tailscale up and for this virtual private server I need to put space dash dash SSH which will make the uh, which will create basically option for me to SSH into the server via Tailscale network instead of SSH via the public IP address so I'm gonna press enter on that and this is the link that I need to use so I'll copy the link into a browser open a new tab paste the link and I'm gonna connect again with the same account that I used for LXC container click connect connected successfully so I'm gonna close that go into my tab where is my tail skill machines refresh and I do have a pie hole cloud with the tab with the label showing up SSH so again straight away on three dots and click disable the key expiry so right now I have pie hole main and I have a Pi-hole cloud, but Pi-hole cloud it has the SSH connected. That's the difference between them. So right now I need to go into Pi-hole um, install script, right click, copy into the terminal, clean all the screen and right click, paste 
and right now we're going to install the PyHole. And installation process pretty much is the same as was inside XC container with just one difference that I will choose tail scale as the network to access to the interface for PyHole instead of EHO, ETHO. So tail scale is selected. Select. Again, Cloudflare is going to be my upstream DNS. And then yes on that. Yes. Yes. Do you want to enable, um, enable query logging? Yes. I want to see everything and the PyHole installation continues. And here we are, installation is finished. It's giving me the IP link that I need to use to access. So it's 65108144181 admin. So I'm going to click continue on that. And again, straight away, I'm going to change the password to something that I will remember instead of instead of something, something just auto-generated. So I can minimize the SSH client, go inside the Hetzner tab and overview, copy the IP address, paste it in inside the new tab and put admin. And I do have access to, to the PyHole. So connect in, save, and I have the PyHole running inside my headset. So let's drag that up next to this. So the where's my other PyHole? This is the PyHole. So this is the PyHole for the local, and this is PyHole inside the cloud. So before setting up the Gravity Sync, I need to do a bit of configuration between these two. Um, before doing a, like a, all the syncing, the main thing with the Gravity Sync is that both pies, both pie holes, needs to be set up or configurations done the same way. And there is a couple of things that I always like to change before um, fully utilizing the pie hole. Is first thing I'm gonna go inside settings, under DNS. I want to make sure that it says permit all origins. This allows pie hole to to resolve all the DNS question, DNS requests, regard, regardless from where it's coming from. By default, is um, you can select as a ETHO because it's a local, but then means that if I will try to query this using a tail scale network, I won't be able to do. So I need to make sure that while I'm at home, it's going to use a local network to do all the DNS queries. And when I'm out and about on, let's say, a laptop or my, my, my phone or Galaxy tablet, it's going to use tail scale and tail scale will be allowed. So that's the change I've done on the local. And because I've done this change on the local, I need to do the same change inside the PyHole, which runs inside the cloud. So again, settings, DNS, permit all origins. As you can see, by default, it was allow only local requests. I need to make sure that permit origins is ticked and press save. So right now, this is one the one change that I do between these two PyHoles. Let's increase that a bit more. So right now, this PyHole and this PyHole basically got set up. And you can happily use this kind of setup from, from this point. Um, you have two pie holes running, and if you're using a tail scale network, you can assign both pie hole IP addresses to be the first hit point of the DNS records. I go into a tail scale, and if I go to my cloud pie hole main, click on IP address and choose copy the IP address. You can choose, like as you can see, VPS4, the host name, or full tail net name. I'm just going to choose IP address. Actually, let's choose, choose this. I go inside DNS, and by default, I had the Cloudflare public setup. I'm going to say add a new uh, name server, custom, punch that in. Oh, it doesn't want it, wants IP address. I forgot about that. So machines, main, copy IP address this time, DNS, add a new one, custom, enter. I'm going to delete Cloudflare. So right now the PyHole main is being used to query. So if I go in the dashboard, as you can see, that was zero, and now the number is going up. And this one, the pie hole in the cloud is doing nothing. So I need to go inside the tail scale, go into machines, pie hole cloud, copy IP address, DNS, and add that as the second option. Save, and that's it. So right now, this one should start getting the information as well as soon as I open anything. So let's say open reddit.com. So reddit.com opens. As you can see, pie hole in the cloud, getting requests sorted. Now for four blocks so far and my pie hole main is one three one four three now and is seven blocked and they're both right now being hit by my tail net network when i'm basically browsing up internet all the dns all the dns resolves all that blocks happening on the both at the same time but i'm using the tail pile not only for as an ad block uh, i'm using that for local dns as well so i click on the local dns click on the dns records and this is IP address 191 for my Proxmox. I'm going to go back inside my PyHole local and click on here, right? I'm going to type PYT 
dash pv dash dot local and this i want to be the ip address this so 192.168.178.191 if i will hit yt dash pv dot lan i want this ip address to be resolved so click that so that is done so technically what i should be able to do is open a new tab put https yt dash pv dot dot local dot lan sorry semicolon 8008006 that should open as you can see the um the my my um what's this called proxmox instant because pyhole was used to resolve this domain into this ip address but the thing is right now let's say my pyhole main dies stops my proxmox crashes or something happens to this lxc container and i can't use this pyhole anymore the pyhole in the cloud if i click on local dns records knows nothing about this entry that i just did inside my pyhole main it has nothing against the local uh, local resolves like local dns records so this is where the gravity sync comes into play gravity sync will keep the both raspberry pi, both raspberry pis both pi holes in sync so this is what we're going to set up now so first thing we're going to go scroll on this github page by the way link will be in the description below click on install gravity sync and before you run this, you need to click on a system requirements and check if your system may meet the requirements. You need to allow the uh, CCH connection and allow passwordless um, connection if you're using the user. I'm going to use the uh, root for this connection just to simplify the settings. But if you want to use not a root but the user, you need to make sure that the root user has the passwordless pseudo permission activated. So right now, let's go back one step and copy all this command. So this command is copied. Let's go inside my Proxmox LXC container because this is the one that is main. You need to install Gravity Sync on the Pi hole that you will be that, that is will be called in your setup as a main as a master, and another Pi will be called as Remote Pi or let's say Node Pi. So I'm gonna go and right click and choose Paste. So that is in. I press Enter. So Gravity Sync is being installed. And first question: a Remote Pi hole host address. So I can use, for example, straight away and say this is the remote address. But in the next couple of steps, I'm going to block access to this IP address from outside. So this is why we set up the tail scale because tail scale is my private VPN or private network. And this is the one I'm going to use. So Pyhole Cloud, I'm going to say to this gravity setup that Pyhole Cloud is located at this address. I press enter. What's the user I'm going to use? I'm going to say root. If you're planning to use a user with just sudo permissions, you need to set up and make sure that uh, that user has a sudo less uh, permission activated. Enter. And it's doing all the things automatically right now. It's generating SSH keys and everything else and getting everything set up. So gravity sync configuration completed in 45 seconds. So gravity sync is working now. To test it, let's go back to a pyhole local. And just to remind you, I have a local DNS record inside my pyhole local entered, which resolves my Proxmox um, Proxmox server um, web GUI using yt-pv.lan. But my pyhole in the cloud, as you can see, has no data available under local DNS records. So back inside the Lexi container, I'm going to put gravity and press tab to autocomplete. So it says gravity sync. Let's actually clean all this. So gravity sync push and press enter so what is doing now is pushing the settings as you can see local dns records is one of them to this remote pie hole via tail scale network remote target root at 192 etc so it's doing this and this is taking slightly longer that we'll usually do because this is the first push so it's doing all the settings and as you can see it's done in 17 seconds so now if i'm going to go to my pie hole in the cloud re uh, reload this and this is showed up and this is showing up here so right now if i will turn the lxc container off of my proxmox this server dies all the local dns records for example for other devices in my house for other home servers and etc will still be resolved because my both pie holes right now are in sync and the way that is in sync that i'm doing that the, my pie hole main will always push the records to my remote pie hole and that is working great, but right now we need to automate this. And to automate this, you, we need to obviously remem remind ourselves what a command we run. So it was gravity dash sync space push. So I'm going to copy this command if I can. So copy this command. And inside my pyhole main, I need to type nano space dash or slash etc slash cron tab enter. And this is the, co this is the file that um, you can use to run the commands 
depending on the day, month, day of the month, hours, and minutes. So we're going to go all the way down to the last line, make a couple of more spaces. I'm just going to put pyhole sync. And next line will be like this, star slash 15, space, star, space, star, space, star, space, star. That's it. So right now I'm just going to type all that and then I'll explain what each of this thing does. So what this is doing is instructing the cron to run this command using root user permissions or use, uh, use run this command as a root every 15 minutes. Let's say I'm going to say, let's say if you're updating the your pyhole more often, let's say you can say every five minutes run this, but 15 minutes is pretty much okay for this. So that means that I want every 15 minutes, regardless what hour it is, what day of the month it is, what month it is, or is it Monday, Tuesday, regardless of all this, as long as it's, you run this every 15 minutes. So control X to close, Y to write, enter to confirm. And that's it. Pyhole main is set up right now with a pyhole, tail scale, and gravity sync, which will sync the all my configurations inside pyhole main to the actual pyhole in the cloud. Technically, from now on, pyhole in the cloud can be ignored. I don't need to log into this anymore. It's just going to always be in sync. One thing I want to just make sure before I'm just going to close and say this is all this is done is this IP address. So public IP address, if we're going to go back inside the terminal and I will exit from SSH connection, if I do root um, 65102, I'm going to press end and let's log in. I forgot to change the password. Okay, so let's go back to a Hetzner and do the rescue password again because I forgot to actually change the password once logged in. So just click on rescue, get myself a new password, paste the password in, enter, and now I logged in as a root. So straight away pass WD, make sure now I change the password. That's it. So go back to what I was trying to say is that right now I'm going to use public IP address to log in. So I'm logging in as a public IP address and I logged in and my password, to be honest, is quite simple. So what if somebody will get actually gain access to this instant for using this public IP address and they're going to start doing some naughty things? I need to block that. This is where UFW comes into play. UFW is a firewall firewall package for Linux that you can set up to block or allow all sorts of stuff. So that's what we're going to do. First thing, I want to make sure that the tail scale is always allowed. So to do that, I need to write UFW allow in on tail, tail, tail scale zero. So that means that firewall allow every, any connection in on this on this um, interface and press enter. So that's, uh, that's all right. And now that's it. This is all I need. So tail scale will be allowed to connect in. Next thing what I need to type is UFW default allow uh, outgoing out going. That means that by default, I'm allowing anything that leaves the server is okay. So leaving uh, out is fine. So default outgoing policy change to allow. Next thing I need to type UF, UFW default deny incoming. So that means that deny incoming in. So right now no one can go into the server, but can leave the server like in packets. Information can leave the server. Again, I basically I will be able to still ping. So first of all, if I put UFW status, it's going to say it's inactive. So I need to activate this. So UFW enable. And yes, I'm fine with that. It just gives you a warning that SSH might be disrupted and you have W uh, reload. So I enable the UFW uh, firewall and it started, but just to make sure everything is fine, I said reload. So now if I type UFW status, it's telling me that anywhere on tail scale zero is allowed to anywhere. Uh, to anywhere allowed from, so basically IPv4 and access from public IP addresses is not allowed. So right now what I need to do, I need to go and exit this out. So this is out. So right now if I'm going to try to log in via public IP address, as you can see, nothing's happening because it's just stopped. But if I'm going to go tail scale, tail scale status, let's find my pyhole in the cloud IP address, copy that, SSH root 
and try to connect via this. As you can see, it's asking me for fingerprint. I'm going to say yes, okay with that. And permission denied. And permission denied is because the tail scale right now is controlling the access. And tail scale by default has the firewall rule or ACL rule added that only the user is to can connect to itself by SSH. We need to sort this out. So go back inside the fire, uh, Firefox or inside my browser. Click on a tail scale and I click on the access controls. So a couple of things you will see here that is different from your default one. So this line, I created the user, speak to mrpgmail.com, that is belongs to group admin. And then tag owner, tag HL, which stands for home lab, and tag Mr. P belongs to group admin. And next one I'm going to create straight away is going to say tag file. And this belongs to group admin. So anybody who is in group admin has option to assign any tag to any tail skill device. So that's in. So I'm going to scroll down, click save. If you've done any boo boo here and it's errors, you will get a message here telling you what's wrong. Go back to machines. So this is why I have tail tag HL and Mr. P already assigned because I've done some of them before. So in the Pyhole cloud, I'm going to click on three dots, click on edit ACL tags and say this is, is Pyhole. And Pyhole main ACL, it is Pyhole and it's a part of my home lab. Yes, that's in. That is done. Back to access controls. Let's scroll down and see. Okay, so ACLs right now is set up to anybody allows uh, is allowed to connect to anybody. Just to make sure that is um, properly connected or properly secured, I'm going to say that is connect like this. Let's say uh, tag HL. So any, anything with a tag home lab can connect to anything. And I can comment that out. So anything, any the tail scale node with a tag home lab or HL destination is anything. So if I close that, save. So if I go back to my machines, that means that Docker YT can connect to anything. De Dell XPS can connect to anything. Pi-hole in the cloud cannot because the this not belongs to a tag HL. So Pi-hole in the cloud cannot connect. So back on uh, access controls, I will add another record here and I will say delete the, star, the asterisk here. So tag pyhole can connect to tag pyhole on any port. So say that. So right now, the way I change the ACLs is that both pyholes can communicate to each other because they both uh, have tag pyhole. And I set up that Pyhole can connect or oh, tag Pyhole owner or tag machine can connect to another machine that has a tag Pyhole. So this is sorted. Next, I'm going to click on the access controls, scroll down a bit. And this is SSH. This is where it all happens. So now I'm going to copy all this. As you can see here, check auto group member can connect to itself as with root user or non root user. I'm going to drop the line down and paste that in. Now I need to write accept and now source i'm going to delete all that i'm going to say tag hl so anything with the tag hl can connect to a devices that are tag hl and tag pyhole and they can connect regardless if it's root or not so accept the connection as long as the source is hl and destination is HL or Pyhole. Save, and that's done. So now if I'm gonna go back inside the terminal and connect to this machine, as you can see, I am connected. And I connected straight away the, without the password because if I exit that out and I connect again using the tail scale IP address using root, press enter. If I scroll up, as you can see, one of the messages authenticated on this IP address using none because I'm using a machine that has a tail skill installed and tail skill is a part of the same tail net to of the device that I'm connecting to it allows me to do all this connection and this is because the SSH tag is added if this is not going to be added I will reconnect using the normal stuff like a SSH keys or password but because I'm telling that this this node accepts SSH connections by a tail net I do need any password you just punch that in and connects so that's it 
everything I believe is set up. I'm not missing anything in this video, I hope. If I missed anything, please check for pinned comment, because if I'll remember, or if it turns out that I missed something to show in this video, I will detail everything in a first pinned comment, just to help you out to set this up. So for end, um, end chat, just to let you know, I have a PyHole running inside my main Proxmox server, and I have a PyHole which runs inside the VPS. You can choose, you don't need to choose Hesna, you can choose anything. And uh, I just chose Hesna because it's going to be much easier for me to do a cleanup after this video. Yes, Hesna allows you to create the firewalls rules, but I, I, I gave you a demo how to do this inside the um, Linux, uh, inside the Linux CLI, because some of the VPS services will not, uh, don't have a feature or don't have an option for you to set up the um, firewall rules outside the CLI. So we went basically black and white kind of stuff to set up the, uh, the firewall rules. So the both PyHoles is talking to each other and they both are uh, being in sync or my main PyHole pushing the data to my PyHole in the cloud. So if I click on this and now if I add admin at the end, I'll get the access to the PyHole admin. Oh, by the way, because we blocked access from outside network, if I'm going to go into servers, PyHole cloud and try to do the same thing with the public IP address that I've done before, there you go. I know, as you can see, it was some action happening with this IP address, but if I'm going to try to connect now, it's not going to happen because I have the firewall rule set up as default incoming is not allowed unless is origin uh, origin connection is comes from a tail scale. And that is it. I'm still, by the way, can go and ping google.com because outgoing packets are allowed, incoming packets are not allowed in using the public IP address. And I think that is it. I hope this video is helpful. Um, I got this set up on my main Proxmox instant, and believe it, believe me or not, two hours later, my main Proxmox, my main PyHole uh, instant LXC container started to play up a bit, or something happened. So I'm glad that I did that because all my local DNS stuff and etc. was saved on another machine, which I was be able to sync back to the freshly installed PyHole on my main Proxmox. And by the way, another thing is not exact, not or not everything will be synced. Uh, you will obviously be able to sync your your uh, whitelist and a blacklist, your DNS DNS records, or local DNS records and local C name records. But all the configurations like a DHCP will not get synced. But for this to properly work, you need to have everything configured exactly on both right on both PyHole instances. So that is it. I hope this video is not long. I'm not sure how long I'm recording this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Um, I do this kind of stuff. Um, I just became quite obsessed about the home lab, self-service stuff, and just tinkering with all kinds of machines and, and uh, services and virtualizing everything under the sun. And unless if you don't really want to subscribe, just just click the like button, it's going to take two seconds and it's going to make me happy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.